for that unrelenting love this morning. Hallelujah! Let's give them some praise. Hallelujah, Jesus! My heart is yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so glad to see everybody here this morning. Uh, you know, the Bible teaches us to give honor where honor is due. And, you know, we want to... Uh, you know, being married to an educator, I learned... Um, from her that teaching it, it's not a job it's a calling 
It's something that people feel drawn to. Uh, I also learned that the job's not over when she clocks out and comes home. Teachers spend a good majority of their afternoons grading papers, preparing for the next day's lessons. Uh, teachers buy a lot of their student supplies. Uh, the list goes on and on. And so uh, I would like to just say to all of our educators and to everyone that works in the education system, it is a worthy calling and we thank you. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, and also to reiterate that, we have a beautiful young lady who's going to be coming here this morning. Let's welcome Carmen. You may be seated as she recites this poem. Why God Made Teachers by Kevin William Huff. When God created teachers, He gave us special friends to truly help us, to help us understand His world and truly comprehend the beauty and the wonder of everything we see and become a better person with each discovery. When God created teachers, he gave us special guides to show us ways in which to grow so we can all decide how to live and how to do what's right instead of wrong to lead us so that we can lead and learn us how to be strong. Why God created teachers in his wisdom and grace was to help us learn to make our world a better and wiser place. Amen. Um, the next person I'm inviting to come up here, I, I just want to brag on for just a minute. I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, you know, a good mark of a teacher is when a child is anxious to go to class. Uh, I know that that's a feeling I never felt as a young person. I never woke up thinking, woo hoo, -hoo, -hoo. Yay. But my daughter Abigail, when she gets up on Sunday, is excited. And that's what we want, a spirit of expectation. My daughter gets dressed. She invites her friends. She's got a friend with her here this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I want you to come see what my Sunday school teachers teaching about this morning. And that's what we, what we need, and that's what we thrive for, and that's fortunately what we have. I would like to welcome, if you guys would give her a hand clap, Sister Christy to the pulpit. <laughs> Primary kids love this woman. <laughs> Just in case. I told myself I was not going to get emotional, but that's sort of difficult. Um, I'm totally out of my comfort zone. I even told Pastor, you know, here I am, but Sam and Aaron, you know, like Moses did in the Bible. Um, but it's an honor and a privilege to stand before you today, but humbling. Um, I'm very, I'm so unworthy of God's grace, but, and His mercy and love, but somehow He saw a reason to use me. Yes, um, years ago, there was a, an uh, evangelist came to the church and his wife always sang a song and it was titled um, Make Me an Instrument of Your Love. Um, that was the gist of the song and that's always been a <laughs> desire of mine throughout my life. Um, but you know, in Jer Jeremiah um, it was stated that God said "While before you were even created in, in the womb I knew you and I, I knew... Um, I set you apart. And my whole life, um, I've felt kind of not of this world, you know. Um, the Bible does say that we're just travelers going through through this world. But we're here for a purpose. Everyone is, of us is here for a purpose. We've been placed where we are. I'm going to read a story to you real quick um, about a girl in 1984, a young girl who had just lost her grandmother was in fourth grade. Her family was striving to overcome the loss, and found um, and she found herself deeply engaged in school and in, in her schoolwork. Her teacher, her fourth grade teacher Terry Red, was an inspiration during this time. The girl watched the young teacher each day as she taught with excitement and enjoyment. Um, she made school a fun place to be. Um, the girl became um, a, a reader. She found that love of reading because of that teacher. She introduced her to novels. 
like um, where the red fern grows and the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. And the teacher always, after lunch, always stopped at a cliffhanger. So the next day, she, that girl was looking forward, what's going to happen to that dog? You know, what's going to happen to those children in that icy place? Are they going to, are they going to survive? Um, but that girl knew that when she grew up, she wanted to be just like Miss Red. She wanted to be a teacher. She'd go home every day with her chalkboard and, and teach whatever the teacher taught during that day. She would, she would reteach it on that chalkboard. Um, she kept wonderful grades throughout school. Then in the 11th grade, something happened. Her family moved halfway across the country from the, the comfort of, of where she was. Um, life was unsteady, her grades dropped. She lost interest in school. But after graduation, that desire started to come back. So she went to a community college for about a year. And then she got this bright idea like all 18 year olds do, I wanna make some money. So she quit school and went and got a full-time job. Um, but working retail was not, was not the life that she had imagined, but it paid the bills. Um, then a year later, she met her soulmate. And life was good again. One day he asked her, he said, what do you really want to do? What do you really want to do with your life? And she said, I want to be a teacher. So he said, then do it. So she began a job as a teacher's assistant and went to school at night. Four years later, she earned her bachelor's degree, becoming the first person in her family ever to earn a, a degree, a college degree. She taught fifth grade for three years and had her first child and the life of a teacher like, like, um, Brother Harper said, it's not always easy. You go home, you take work home, you grade papers, you do, um, you do lesson plans. You worry about those kids that come to school stinking or, or you know, their ribs are showing. The ones that you see a little bruise on their arm every now and then. You, you know, all that carries over with the teacher. So she, the opportunity arose for her to go back to school to become a librarian and earn a master's degree. So here I am 21 years later. God has opened doors, he's closed doors throughout my life, but he has always been present, never ever leaving me alone. As I look back, I'm so grateful that he's never ever left my side. Um, Currently, I am at a school um, that's a very diverse population. Um, I've been there for five years. Um, my first year there, a student walked in the library and he said, Ms. Patterson, I have a question for you. I said, what? He said, you love Jesus, don't you? I had never mentioned God, the Bible. I never said anything to that child. But my mom always said, you know, your actions speak louder than words. Amen. That's right. So throughout life, children are the best judge of character. Yes, they are. If, if a teacher's there just for a paycheck, the students know it. Right. right. Um, then a few years ago, um, I have a big flat screen TV in the library now with the word read above it. I know it's kind of an oxymoron, but I'll play, you know, instrumental gospel music. And um, kids... One, a few years ago, a kid walked in. He was a troubled young man in a therapeutic foster home. Um, he had had a lot of behavioral issues. But I, I got him hooked on graphic novels, which is like comics, you know. And he would come in every morning to get his new book. And that morning he walked in, he stopped and he looked at me. He said, Ms. Patterson. I said, yeah. He said, that's church music. And it was like, so we stood there and we sang every praises to our God. I remember the song. We sat, stood there and sung that little song together. And making those connections and building relationships is everything that a teacher should, should do. You know, before the academics, if you can capture their heart, that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing. Um, 
I want to get a little bit into the meat of, of what God laid on my heart after Pastor Dublin had spoken to me about talking today. Um, in the world of education, there is a, there's ter some terminology, and it's called bridging the gap. There is a huge gap. Like in my school, is very diverse. You have po impoverished kids and children that live in half-million-dollar homes. And there's a gap in education that academic, when they pull out the data, there's a huge gap in those that, that have a better lifestyle, how they perform, than those that have been raised in poverty. And so constantly it's been, it's been drilled into teachers' heads, bridge the gap. We've got to bridge this gap. But, you know, a few years ago on Facebook or somewhere, I saw a video about bridging the gap and how as, as Christian educators that we are the bridge from the spiritual world to the, the, um, the world. Um, first, I'd like to talk about the gap a little bit. You know, a gap is a, is a huge, is an unwanted divide, you know. Um, and to fill that space, the, the way that man has found the best way to fill that space over the years is to build a bridge or to put something to connect those two gaps. So if you can open your spiritual eyes for just a moment and think about the bridge that we are, the spiritual bridge. Um, if you think about the bridges of the world, there's the Golden Gate Bridge, which is huge and marvelous and wonderful to look at. Um, but there's also the little foot bridges that are just built out of a couple of planks. And there's then the culverts. You know, on the way to church, I was, I was observing the culverts here. It's just a little cement circle or a pipe underneath the driveway. Dirt is covering it. Nobody even really knows it's there, but it serves the same purpose as that Golden Gate Bridge to get from one side to the other. So as educators, you may feel some days like the Golden Gate Bridge, and then other days you may just feel like a culvert that nobody even notices that you're there. But God uses every one of us for his purpose. Right. Right. Um, sometimes, <laughs> you know, he's the engineer, and the engineers go out to that gap, and they decide what kind of bridge needs to be put there, right. whether it needs to be an extravagant thing or just a little culvert. But you know, every one of them needs repair. Sometimes the board breaks on that little plank bridge. Or sometimes maybe some of the, the winds come and the winds blow and the waters and the rains wash away um, the paint and, the, and you know, a screw may get loose. And, and that engineer has to repair us. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it, it's not the best situation. It feels like... God, am I ever going to get through this storm? How can I stand? How can I not collapse? Right. You know, sometimes it's like, I just, I can't do this anymore, God. I just want to, I just want to collapse. But he has put us there for, for a purpose. Right. Right. So I'm going to read um, Psalms 46 this morning, if you want to turn with me. <clears throat> Psalms 46. It's a short chapter. I'm going to read the whole thing. But this always comes to mind when I feel like I'm, a, I'm about to collapse where I am. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake and the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, the desolation he hath made of the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. The break, he breaketh the bow and cuttereth the spear in sunder. The, um, he burneth the chariot of fire. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. That's in my office at work every day. 
Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. So that's the, the verse that um, I just wanted to share with you. But um, I just want to talk a little bit more about some of my experience throughout the past 21 years. Um, the school that I'm at is not only diverse in finances, but it's, it's diverse in the spiritual realm as well. Um, when I first got there, um, I had served in elementary school for 16 years, and I had a midlife crisis, and I said, I want to go to middle school. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I, I had my first interview, and then they called me back for a second interview, and I sat at the stop sign in front of the school, and I looked up, and I said, God, this is middle school. If you say no, it's okay. <laughs> But no, he didn't say no. He said, okay, this is where I want you, Christy. So I, um, I've been there, like I said, for five years. And when I first got there, I was like, Lord, what have I done? This place is just, it, you know, I'm sitting in my office and I hear filthy mouths of the sailors as they're through the cinder block walls. I hear words that I would never want my children to ever hear in middle school. It, it wasn't good. It's still not great, but God is working. Um, three years ago, <clears throat> um, there's a, a thing called um, See You at the Pole every September, the last Wednesday of September, where children around the nation go gather around the flagpole and they pray at, at schools. And um, so I had heard about this and my mind got to racing and even back when I was in high school, there was a club called FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And I'm like, I wonder if it still exists. So I, I started searching. I looked at other schools in my county. And I found that another school in um, another part of the county um, did that. And I talked to a few folks. And I got the person who was over that. So I emailed um, Dr. Cavanaugh. And I said, um, how do I get this started? I, I know it has to be student initiated. Teachers can't teach about God. There's legalities in that. So lawfully, how can I get God in this place? So I emailed him, and he said, I want to come meet with you. I said, okay. So he came the, the next Friday. I emailed him on a Monday. He came the next Friday. He said, Christy, he said, um, why did you email me? I said, because it's been on my heart. I said, you know, God, there needs to be God in this place. He said, um, I want you to know, he said, the Saturday before you emailed me, some ministers and, and guys from my church came to your school campus. He said, we walked around that school and did a prayer walk around that campus. He said, then I got your email that Monday morning. Wow. He said, I've been trying for 10 years to get into this campus. Last Friday, we had 48 kids meet after school in the library for Fellowship of Christian Athletes talking about God. It's amazing. Um, every morning, those children, the leaders of this club, come in the library. There's about 12 of them, and they pray every morning before school. Um, there's a little Chinese girl. I've known her since kindergarten because the school I'm at now, the primary school that I worked at, feeds into this school. So I've known her for a long time. Um, this child, she when she first came to kindergarten, she was had just gotten here from China. She spoke no English. She cried the first year, the whole year. Um, I tried to connect with her. Then her sister came the next year and things settled down. Now you never know. She's totally fluent in English. But she got, she helps me in the library in the morning. She's my little helper. And um, she's her family is Buddhist. She never is involved in the prayer. She's always putting books away for me. But I noticed... <laughs> This past see you at the pole in September, we went down by the football field and gathered around the pole. I was taking pictures as they were praying and everything. And I looked, and standing up on the hill, next to the concession stand, was my little Eve. <laughs> Something is being planted in that child's heart, you know? I mean, and when she becomes an adult and can make her own decisions, how do I not know that she's not going to say, huh, 
There was something about those children that came and prayed to a God that I want to know. And that is my desire. Yes. That something like that will happen. Amen. Um, I don't know what God's future is for me. Um, yesterday I went and took a two-hour test called the Praxis for ESL, English as a Second Language, and I'm going to add that to my license and see what God does with that. He's been working on my heart for a few years to, to do something a little different, but I just, I just hope that the seeds that have been planted, the, the actions that I have given, that that will be planted in those children's hearts that someday that God will give them the truth, the whole truth, yes, right. and all glory and all honor belongs to Jesus. Thank you. You can't tell me teachers don't make a difference. Come on, let's stand up and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for godly men and women, God, who go into our school systems, Lord Jesus Christ, and shed your love. At this time, if I could call for the elders to come to the front, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I do have a special need. I would like to raise for a young woman that I met on Thursday night. Her name's Letitia. She was in a car accident. I'm just asking that you pray for her. God knows exactly where she's at. But if you have a need in your body, if you have a, a, something going on in your family or in your life, I would encourage you to come and be anointed with oil. The anointing works. Amen. And this is a house of prayer. So let's lift up our teachers today. Let's lift up our, our soldiers. Let's continue to pray for Puerto Rico, for Texas. Uh, let's continue to pray for uh, our leadership in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the spirit we feel in this house. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you would move upon this congregation, God. That you would bless our educators. That you would bless, Lord Jesus Christ, our teachers, Lord. Give them a strength, God, to carry this burden that's placed upon them, Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for healing in this sanctuary. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that marriages can be healed. We pray, Lord Jesus, that blessings will be poured out, God, that financially, Lord, spiritually, Lord, change us, move us today, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name.
so thankful for the love of God. Can everybody say amen? Amen. 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 Because His love is real. It's genuine. Amen. amen. And uh, I am so thankful for the love of God. Sister Christy, thank you so much. Uh, what an excellent job. Amen. And I felt your heartbeat. Amen. And that is what is so very, very, very important. Thank you so much. Amen. We are a blessed people. Can you yes, say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm glad that you're here today. Amen. God bless you, and after you've done that, you may be seated. We want to say thank you once again for everyone who's here to worship the Lord with us uh, and to show our, your appreciation for our educators, uh, and we are so thankful. I would like, uh, Sister Cynthia is not here today. She had to take, uh, as many of you know, uh, her, grand, uh, her grandson she is uh, uh, helping raise because her daughter has joined the Navy, uh, and so uh, uh, Alicia, is getting re Alicia is getting ready to ship out, and so she wanted uh, Ethan to be there with her this weekend before she left. So Sister Cynthia is not uh, is not here, and she is one of our members who has been in the uh, Cumberland County School System for a bit. Uh, honey, do you know how long? Uh, uh, she's been a long, long time. I mean, a long time. Uh, but, uh, but she is a blessing, uh, and she's that we are blessed. Uh, and I didn't mean that. I didn't want to make her sound like she's old or anything. Uh, but she is uh, uh, she is committed to her job. She's another one uh, that will walk into that classroom every day and pray before her uh, children arrive and she just does a phenomenal job. So she's not here today, but I want to ask uh, uh, Sister Harper to stand. I want to ask uh, uh, Sister April to stand. Sister Christy, we know Sister Kayla, uh, Sister Crystal in the back. She's a first-year uh, educator. Uh, Kayla, where's Kayla? I don't want to see Kayla. All right, oh. I'm missing her, but she is also. I uh, want these uh, ladies to, I uh, uh, want these folks to stand. Brother Barrington, why don't you stand? Uh, plays a big part uh, in our uh, education system. Let's give these folks a, a hand clap of appreciation. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you as you are seated. Make sure you let these folks know how much we truly appreciate them. A couple of things that were in our announcements next Sunday. Brother Joe is, yes, he is in our school system as a resource officer. Brother Joe, why don't you stand up? Amen. Plays a very big part. Amen. He's there with our, our children uh, every day. Sometimes uh, uh, kids are not always as glad to see him if they have to go to him personally. Uh, I'm sure they're glad, some of them glad to see him there. Uh, but uh, what a blessing he is to us. And we have a, a gift for each one of you uh, today before you leave. Uh, and so thank you uh, for all that you do. Uh, it is a blessing uh, to, to us and to our children. A couple of things that were in our announcements. Next Sunday is All Nations Sunday. Uh, we want to celebrate the diversity of our church, our community, uh, our kingdom, our nation. Amen. And uh, uh, America is not so much in the beginning, it was referred to as a melting pot. Uh, and the goal at that time was just to make uh, everybody the same. And we just sort of all mush uh, uh, together. But really, uh, we're more now not so much a melting pot as we are uh, a stew, if you will. When you make a stew, you have all the different ingredients uh, and they're there. And it's obvious what they all are. But they come together to make something, uh, something that is just great and that is what we are we do not want anyone uh, to lose uh, uh, where they came from or, or what they represent we want to celebrate all of the diversity uh, in our nation and in our church can you say amen yeah. I'm so thankful that we are all not alike uh, amen I'm grateful uh, uh, for where you come from and I respect uh, where you come from and I'm Amen. so intrigued to learn more uh, about others uh, uh, so much to the point that uh, I will literally spend uh, hours at, at times uh, uh, watching and listening uh, uh, to people from other places because I am so intrigued and I'm in love uh, with people and with what God has blessed us with can you say amen, amen. so next Sunday everybody say next Sunday, next Sunday. 11 o'clock Amen. No Sunday school. We will gather here together and uh, we will go right into our service. Uh, we're going to hear from several people from or in our church. Uh, their personal testimony is going to be a great blessing to us. So I encourage you to be here. We will also have a time of fellowship, fellowship, which we will also have today. When you go into the fellowship hall today, there will be a sign up list uh, on, on the stand for you to go ahead and sign up for what you're going to bring next Sunday. So please uh, uh, sign 
sign up uh, uh, as you come into that uh, into the fellowship hall and make sure that you invite someone we have plenty of invites left uh, I've mailed out several dozens of these uh, and several of you have taken these out to invite uh, 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 folks to be here with us uh, also want to announce uh, uh, Thursday we are going to pick up uh, uh, our our distribution our food from second harvest uh, uh, we are going to have a loaves and fishes distribution next Saturday everybody say next Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we need you here to help us uh, as our recipients come uh, to receive uh, their assistance. Uh, so please, if you are able to come, uh, uh, let Sister Sarah know. Sister Sarah, wave your hand. Uh, let Sister Sarah know. Uh, and Junior, Junior, let Junior know too. He's raising his hand. Uh, that you will be here uh, to give us a hand because uh, uh, we want to not only uh, give uh, to these folks, but we also want them let them know that we love them, we appreciate them, and we're praying uh, God's blessings upon their life. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So please, uh, we encourage you uh, to be here with us next uh, uh, next Saturday at 2 o'clock uh, as we distribute this. Uh, if you have a red Solid Rock t-shirt, uh, uh, go ahead and wear it. Uh, uh, if yours is getting wore out, or if you don't have one and you want to get a new one, let me know. We can place an order uh, for those. Uh, and then also our anniversary we are we are turning 16 years old everybody's excited about being 16 amen uh, I, uh, 16 years old. Uh, Solid Rock is turning 16 years old, uh, and we will celebrate and uh, have our anniversary service. We had initially planned for two services, uh, uh, but we're just going to have the Sunday service uh, because within the district on, on Saturday, uh, they're having uh, a youth core program in Clinton, uh, and we want our youth to be able to go and be a part of that, uh, uh, canvassing the city of Clinton uh, to help uh, uh, encourage people to come out to our apostolic church there. Uh, uh, and others are welcome to go. Uh, but there are several other things going on within the district that, uh, that weekend, and we did not want to take away from that, and we knew we would miss some of the folks who would normally come and worship with us and celebrate on Saturday. So we will just be worshiping together uh, that Sunday at 11 a.m. Amen. And God is going to be a blessing uh, to us that day. Brother Wayne Huntley, the district superintendent, uh, and one of the greatest uh, preachers in the apostolic movement, uh, uh, not just a great preacher, uh, a great communicator. He has planted an awesome church uh, in the city of Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, and God is just blessed greatly through Brother Wayne Huntley. Amen. And so we will be blessed uh, on that day. So make sure that you're marking your calendars and you'll be here uh, to be a part of all of that in Jesus' name. And I also want to encourage you to be here on Wednesday evenings, our Bible study service. Uh, uh, we, we really get to the meat of the Word. Uh, you'll be blessed by being here on Wednesday can everyone say amen? amen? Amen. With all that said, it's time to worship the Lord with giving. Woo! Amen. I want to ask you to stand to your feet. Uh, amen. As, uh, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we now have uh, a bookmark or Bible markers uh, uh, with our prayer on it. Uh, and we want, uh, Brother Barrington, will you come and help uh, Brother Bruce? Uh, if you will help us with the printing, uh, it will, if you can give us a uh, a uh, dollar for two that will help for the printing we had a thousand of these printed uh, we want to use these to give to guests we want to use these to mail out uh, to, to people that we want to encourage to return to church uh, uh, but we had a thousand of these printed uh, and on them uh, they have the prayer that we've been praying uh, uh, brother Harper just testified to me yesterday they got a hundred dollar gift Woo! card in the mail and then part of this prayer is uh, 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 in the mail. Checks in the mail. Uh, amen. And I believe that God blesses those who give. Uh, amen. Uh, from the abundance of their heart. And everyone say amen. 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 So you're, you're going to want one or two of these uh, uh, because it has our prayer on it. Uh, and you can take this home with you. And this is a good thing to pray uh, throughout the week. Amen. And, or give this to someone. And on the back of this, uh, it has our address. It has our phone number. And it has our... Our, our church times and it also has an invitation to visit us on Facebook if you've not gone to our Facebook page please go to our Facebook page and like us because when you do that everybody that's in your Facebook feed every time something po uh, Solid Rock posts something it'll be on your feed so that everyone will see this all of our services all of our services are connected to Facebook 
Amen. Uh, so Sister Christie's uh, uh, message today will be on Facebook uh, uh, for, for all of your friends to see. We have a great time here at Solid Rock, uh, right. and we want everybody to know about it. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 And so uh, be a blessing. And because of our YouTube channel, we have people around the world who have contacted us uh, to let us know from Pakistan, uh, from Eastern Europe, uh, uh, even all throughout the United States uh, who have been blessed by Solid Solid Rock United Pentecostal Church. And we want to be a blessing, not only here in Hope County, but we want to be a blessing around the world. Amen. Amen. So uh, if you'll help us uh, as we begin to pray. We are in covenant with an almighty God, and so today we join together in a covenant prayer of giving and receiving. So if you have your offering, uh, if you will hold it up to the Lord and pray this prayer aloud with me. By the authority of your word. I have given, it will be given back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, the windows of heaven are open. You pour out on me such a blessing, there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, Benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And everybody say amen. amen. God bless you as you give.
that in my depths of despair, in those moments when I was alone and there was seemed to be no one there, that you were there, that God, you sent someone, amen, right to the place where I was, amen. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. I remember as a backslidden teenage boy, not real certain about what I was going to do other than the fact that I wanted to run as far away from the Lord as I could possibly get. I had a good friend, a man who came to me. His name is Daryl Carnley. A man, he's a part of an, an awesome ministry now called My360 Project. They take shoes uh, around the world to different countries and nations. Uh, impoverished nations and people who don't have shoes, uh, amen, uh, and they, they give these shoes. They just went to uh, Puerto Rico uh, to take a water filtering system to help out down there. And what a beautiful, beautiful thing uh, that uh, Brother Daryl uh, and his, the ministry that he's involved with uh, uh, is, is just done. They, uh, uh, the, it's, I don't understand how it works, but they can take this, this uh it looks like really nothing, This, but they can take filthy water and filter it through this thing and make it uh, to where folks can uh, um, can drink and have uh, drinking water. And it's just a, a blessing, amen. So if you get a chance to uh, check Daryl Carnley out. But he came to me, amen, uh, and said, uh, Frankie, and that's what they used to call me. Or, of course, when I go back home, they call still call me uh, Frankie. Frankie, um, you know you're not where you need to be. Uh, you know that living for God is what you need to be doing. And God has a calling on your life. Uh, and He really sat talked with me for a very, very long time. Amen. And He woke me up. And I'm so thankful that He was there to do that. I went home with Him uh, that evening after I got off work and real early the next morning. The young people of my uh, church at that time were gathering at 6 o'clock every day before school at the church and pray before they went and got ready for school to go uh, to school. And so I went that morning. I had already graduated from school. I was uh, been out of school for almost two years at that time and uh, went into that prayer meeting and uh, snuck in and got on the back seat to, and began to pray. And God began to move in my life and in my heart and began to bring me back to where I needed to be. Amen. And so, God's good. And everybody say all the time. All the time. Amen. And so, uh, folks, we never want to give up on anyone. Amen. And we always want to be doing all that we can. I want to just take a moment of your time. God bless you as you are seated today. And I, want to, I will not be long, I promise you. Amen. Uh, and I'm... First, I want to say thank you. Sister Harper has already snuck out to the back uh, to make sure that everything is ready. Uh, and so there's some folks back there. I ask that no one else leave because I feel like I'm speaking to myself. Amen. So please uh, stay. But I want to say, and please, I've, I've conveyed my thanks to Sister Harper, but please let her know how thankful I am uh, for all the work that she has given over the last few weeks uh, uh, to, to today's service. And I also want to say thank you uh, to Sister Christy for such a great job that you've done uh, today. I want to read just a couple of scriptures and then I, uh, quickly we're going to get ready to go fellowship uh, and be, uh, be blessed to be together with one another. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 6, a very familiar scripture, says, uh, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old he will not depart uh, from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the bar borrower is a servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger uh, shall fail. Uh, train up a child child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Uh, Sister Christie give us a little bit of her testimony and I've talked to others uh, of you who have worked uh, in the school system. Amen. And I, I hear the testimonies and I'm moved uh, to emotions when I, I see. I know that teaching is not, uh, it's not a career. It is a calling. I believe a, a real teacher is not someone who is there uh, to seek out uh, 
a, a paycheck, but there's someone who is there to invest into each one of those little lives that are in front of them. And then even if they teach in middle uh, school, high school, and even in higher education, they're there to invest in a life and to pour themselves. Uh, teaching is just as much of a ministry as uh, preaching is, if not more than a ministry uh, of a teacher. And these uh, educators that we have been blessed with to know, uh, and that many of you are blessed with to have in your lives, uh, they come in each and every day, and they, uh, some of them every day of the week, uh, uh, to invest into our children and to train them up. Uh, and I want to give a plug uh, for education. Uh, all of our children need an education. Amen. All of our children need an education. Amen. And that education does not need to stop. Amen. We are learning. When you stop learning, uh, you stop living and you're on to dying. Uh, life is education. And everyone say amen. 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 And so we train up these children and it's a never ending job. It continues even as adults. We are still learning. But when that is invested in a child and in a young person, it becomes a part of them and they will never lose it. I can tell you today, amen, I can remember I started elementary school in a Apopka floor or right outside of Gainesville, Florida. I'm sorry. I started elementary school there and then that only went for a month or so and then moved back to Lebanon, Missouri. Uh, my kindergarten teacher's name was Miss Schaefer. My first grade teacher was Miss Heights. My second grade teacher, uh, we moved to Richland Elementary School, which was a community about 26 miles away from Lebanon, Missouri. My second grade teacher was Mrs. York. My third grade teacher was Mrs. Evan. Evans. My fourth grade teacher was Mrs. York again because she moved up to fourth grade. My, my, miss, my fifth grade teacher was Mrs. Mackey. And then in the Richland Elementary school system. The junior high was right there and we had four different teachers. I had Mr. Bove, I had Mr. Ray, I had Mr. Mitchell, and I had Mrs. Mackey who had now moved up uh, to be a part of the junior high system. I will not tell you all of my high school teachers' names, but I can remember each and every one of them because every one of these teachers, even now, I am 48 years old, each one of these teachers were not just there to get a paycheck, they were there to invest in a life. And as a man who is now 48 years old, I still reach back to my past and I pull out the things that they planted inside of me and made a part of me. When I was in first grade, I remember uh, it was close to Christmas time and I was uh, uh, raised in a very conservative home and also uh, my parents did not have a, a lot of money and so uh, uh, they wanted me to realize that there was not a Santa Claus because they did not want us waking up uh, on Christmas morning and if I'm spoiling this for someone please forgive me uh, um, uh, but they, they wanted me to know so that I wouldn't wake up uh, so that me and my sisters wouldn't wake up and be looking for all these gifts uh, uh, and not have them there and so uh, they had told me that there uh, wasn't a Santa Claus but there are some times that I still believe in Santa Claus <laughs> just joking uh, but so I felt it uh, uh, that it was my responsibility to educate uh, the other children in my first grade class. Uh, and so I made it uh, a matter of uh, fact uh, to let all the children in my class know that there was not uh, a Santa Claus. And there was another young girl in my class. Her name was Laura. And so we uh, set out uh, on a mission uh, to let everyone know. And of course, uh, it got us in in great grave trouble. We were placed in the hallway sitting there and we were getting because we had we, we, we had caused a stir in this classroom. All the other children were just devastated because of the message that we had uh, conveyed to them and so we were sitting out in the hall really worried about what was going to happen. I guess Miss Heights was in there assuring the children that there was a Santa Claus and there were false prophets in the first grade and we did not need to listen to them. Amen. And so we were out there and uh, we had a librarian and in those days not only did the librarian, she would, you would go to the library, uh, but she would also come to your class on certain days. And so Mrs. Ford, who I'm sure God 
probably she was a, an elderly lady then she was our librarian and she come walking down the hall and I remember Mrs. Ford because she wore dresses every day uh, and she was uh, uh, she was just a, a great lady and she stopped she saw that we were uh, we were just really shook up and we would, we didn't know what was going to happen I didn't know if they were really going to cart us off I did not understand because we had committed such a, a terrible crime I, uh, I, but I was willing to die as a martyr for my cause. <laughs> But she assured us that everything was all right and uh, to not be troubled and nothing bad would happen to us uh, because of the danger uh, that we had exposed these children to. Um, she, she, she assured us that everything was going to be all right uh, uh, and she understood where we were coming from. Uh, and, and I remember to this day her there, uh, you know, bending down and speaking to us because we were sitting in two chairs side by side right outside the classroom uh, door. But fortunately, after that was all over, Miss Heights did not destroy us and did not get rid of us. But she uh, encouraged us to believe uh, what we believe, but to not, to, uh, in, you know, to not mess with these other children and, and give up their, their, ho their hope uh, uh, that they had. But these things are implanted in my mind and in my memory. And these teachers uh, that invested in me, um, it's still in my mind and in my heart. Uh, and Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for, such is, uh, for, such, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed the fence. Uh, amen. And what a blessing our children children are. Amen. And I thank you educators every day that you go in there and you realize the importance of these children. And you may not be able to vocally uh, uh, share your testimony, but your witness is needed in the classroom. The Spirit of God that goes with you is needed in there day in and day out. And everybody say amen. 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 There was a report on MP NPR uh, and it was uh, Teaching in America and the subtitle to this report was Only the Strong will survive. Teaching in America today is, uh, is something that is, is difficult. Uh, amen. It is something uh, that you would not... Uh, uh, it takes someone that has a true calling uh, uh, to go into. Amen. And as I, I was list, reading this report, uh, amen, uh, it began to... Uh, they spoke to a man named Tom Bergen, and he was teaching in North High School in Denver. And Tom remembers his first day in front of a class. Uh, was about 10 years ago. And he said, it was terrifying. They all sensed how nervous I was and just kind of rolled with it. And he said, I think I sweated through a shirt that day. And he said the, the school that he's in was a, a troubled school and there were programs to, to, to help bring the children or bridge that gap that Sister Christie was talking about. They bring in special intervention specialists. They bring in psychologists and things like that to help these children. And this is the environment that our teachers are in because... We're dealing with children who are troubled, who come from backgrounds and homes uh, uh, that we ourselves could never imagine. And children, if you're living in a good godly home, you need to be thankful and everybody say amen. But there, when you walk into these classrooms, you don't know what's going on. And Sister Christy alluded a little bit to this. And that's why we need good godly educators. And that's why we need God in the classroom. And everybody say amen. Amen. We need that hope uh, that is there. But they said they bring in more teachers, uh, uh, Tom said. Uh, they bring in psychologists, uh, uh, he said. He said, I've never broken up so many fights uh, in all of my life. And Pamela Guy, uh, who teaches uh, uh, in uh, Austin Multiplex High School, she's been teaching for about 10 years. 10 years, she said it's in a tough neighborhood and students have a lot of odds uh, stacked against them and putting added pressure uh, on Guy and the other teachers. You see, they don't just go in there to teach uh, children. There are so many other things that they have to do uh, uh, to connect with these kids. Uh, amen. She says, I wear many hats. I may have to be a mom sometimes. I, I have to be a counselor sometimes. I, I have to be a lawyer. And There's a lot of situations uh, where you don't have as much parental involvement uh, uh, with what you're trying to do and it uh, it's always a daily task of uh, what will I have to do today and what do I need to bring to the class uh, uh, today so it's not just uh, uh, going in there and giving uh, instructions in reading writing and arithmetic it, it goes a whole lot uh, uh, further 
So over their decade of teaching, both Bergen and Guy remember their low points. And Bergen says one class in particular was out of control and he ran out of ideas uh, on how to fix it. He thought, why don't I just write them a letter? He said, so I put my heart out there about why I value them and their class. So he wrote to them all the reasons he loved teaching and then he asked the students to write back. And this was a class that he had almost given up hope on. He said, what I got back were beautiful things. They all either owned up to it or said, I'm going to be a proactive part of changing this. And every day I would start class and I would put their quotes anonymously up on the board and have them reflect on it and share what they thought and then we would launch into class. And it completely flipped it. And by the end of the class year, it was one of my favorite places to be. According to a 2014 study by the Alliance for Excellent Education, every year roughly half a million teachers in the U.S. either move to a different uh, a career or often to a more affluent school or they leave education altogether. The pay isn't great, the work is emotionally trying, and the hours uh, are long. Guy says teachers have to feel called to the work and then put their hearts uh, into it. Because you're going to be pulled on and, it's going to, and so much is going to be required of you and ask of the, you that you have to be willing and only the strong will survive. And everyone say amen. 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 So I say thank you to the strong educators in our lives and everybody say amen. 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 I want to ask you to stand to your feet today. We are blessed with our educators. We're blessed by a group of people here and those who are not here, your teachers and young people, those of you who may be in higher education, you have a lot to be thankful for, those of you who are in high school, and even middle school, elementary school. If you have a good teacher in your life, you're blessed, and it's a gift that God has given you. In just a few moments, we're going to go next door, and we want to invite everyone to go and be a part of what's going on here. But I want to ask those that I, I called on this morning, I want you to come up here and stand. If you're here. Because we want to, as a church body, as Sister Gracie plays and sings, if you can come as close as you can get. Amen. What a fine group of people. Amen. If you'll spread out here. Amen. Yes, you all know what they look like from the, the front, so now you can look at it from the back. Amen. What a great, great group of people. Every day, these folks go into our schools, not just to get a paycheck, but they go in there to bridge that gap and to take and not only educate and be a blessing to our children, but also to somehow share the love of God with those that they work with and with those that they educate and instruct. So as a church body, what I want you to do is I want you to come forward. Of course, our, our children and young people first because we want you to pray for our educators. And then we want the whole church to come and gather down here. And just if you can't get close to them, but just reach your hand forward. And I want you to just take a season and, and pray for these folks that, that God would continue to bless them, continue to anoint them, to give them the strength that they need to survive, sometimes in a very hostile environment, sometimes in a, an environment that uh, uh, makes them want to just throw up their hands and, and run away. Sometimes uh, uh, it, it's not always easy, but uh, we want to pray that God would bless them. So if you'll come and gather behind these folks uh, and, and let's pray. Let's take the time. Those of you who can get close enough, uh, uh, lay your hand on their shoulder and pray that God would strengthen them. God would bless them. God would lift them up. God would be with them. Lord Jesus, God. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray, Jesus, that you would touch each and every one of these. Uh, Lord, these educators. Lord, uh, these workers who go into the school, Lord, uh, those who get on that bus, Lord Jesus, those uh, who are there, sometimes just uh, uh, visibly, Lord God, I pray, I'm Lord, running, that you would strengthen them. I, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, that, that you would be with them, God, 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 that you would be with them, God
Thank you.